The in the ring return of boxing means boxing news has been bubbling up outside the bubble. And for that, we bring in my friend Max Kellerman. A reminder, by the way, Max on Boxing is back. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays now. We're enjoying that. And Max, as I've told you, I always enjoy your segment, Max Me Anything. But I want to go forward with a new segment here just for tonight. And it is Max Reacts. So I'm going to give you the news. I'm going to give you Max what's buzzing. Reacts in boxing and then I want your reaction. You give me the quick reaction. Let's start with this. Tia Fimo Lopez this is like training the video. The old Friday Night Fights franchise. I know. Well, you like that? Tia Fimo Lopez. Video's been going viral of him training that the guy's just destroying heavy bags, like ripping them out of the sheetrock, destroying them. How would you characterize your excitement right now for late summer, early fall, rescheduled Tia Fimo Lopez, Vasily Lomachenko? This one goes to 11. Remember a spinal tap? <laughs> yes. Why don't you just turn it to 10? This one goes to 11. Is there something higher than 10 on a scale of 1 to 10? That is such a, a dynamic, that promises to be have such dynamic action between two guys who go lightning speed, Lopez with the power and the youth, Lomachenko and skill. Lomachenko with the skill and the experience. I can't wait. Max reacts to this, and it concerns Alexander Usyk, the recent undisputed cruiserweight champion. Could he be in the way of all this heavyweight title unification we talk about? Because his co-promoter, Max, says, hold on a second. We're the WBO mandatory, so Anthony Joshua has to fight Usyk after he fights Pulev, the other mandatory, before he fights Tyson Fury. Your reaction to that? That actually doesn't bother me as, as much as you might think it would. I don't know that Joshua beats Usyk. I think Usyk is a marquee fighter. In my own mind, he's a marquee fighter. Now, does it spoil Joshua Fury if Usyk wins? Yeah, maybe, or maybe it just throws another player in the mix. You know, let's not forget, not that long ago, it wasn't about Tyson Fury. It was Joshua Wilder that everyone wanted to see. This is competition. Throw him in there. May the best man win. And when the dust settles and the two guys are standing, that's your super fight. Let's retreat about 70, 80, maybe 90 pounds uh, down to 130 pounders here. And I want to talk about Miguel Burchelt, who we're going to see against an overmatched opponent coming up. But at least we're going to see him. And I love watching him fight. And the former featherweight champion, Oscar Valdez, who's going to also return to our air against a much better opponent in July. Max reacts to reports that they will indeed fight in the fall. What I love about that fight is when you have a young guy who's up and coming and looks good, even if there are little bumps along the way, and it feels like it is, it is his destiny to do something. And then the older guy, Burchelt, who is just an honest fighter. You know, he doesn't have that special kind of, you're just talking about Lomachenko or even Teofimo. Not saying he's not as good as Tiafimo, but Tiafimo has that, that lightning speed, the crazy power that jumps out at you. And Burchelt is just a machine. But if Valdez wants to fulfill that destiny, that machine doesn't care about how you view yourself or how the, the, the sports world or the boxing world may see your future. You're going to have to beat that guy. And I don't know that Valdez can do it. That is a tremendous matchup. A couple quick ones for you here, and we'll go to welterweight right now because Golden Boy has announced that on July 24th, Virgil Ortiz will be making the comeback of Golden Boy. He'll be in action 15-0. Now, Max, this is a guy that many of us have voted as prospect of the year last year. Very promising. Your level of confidence that he will be the real deal at welterweight with all those veterans hanging around, all that top-heavy talent at 147 pounds, your confidence in Ortiz being the real deal. Yeah, I think he'll be the real deal, but what does real deal mean? You know, like, is Errol Spence the real deal? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. He barely beat Sean Porter. And there are five or six guys in the division like that. You know, like at that level, when you think, no, no, that guy's different. He's a top five pound for pound guy, as opposed to a guy like Sean Porter, who's a respected championship level fighter. But you don't think of him as top five pound for pound. That top five pound for pound guy squeaks by Sean Porter. So Virgil Ortiz can be the real deal and still take some L's in a very deep welterweight division. All right, let's stay on the Golden Boy conversation because not as all good there. Ortiz is, but this part isn't. And that is their prized prospect, the wildly popular Ryan Garcia, 
who now has been publicly complaining about Golden Boy on social media, questioning his pay, the support he receives, going so far, and I want your reaction to the young, popular Ryan Garcia tweeting at Golden Boy this quote, Max, you do realize you're supposed to be my promoter, not hater, right? Well, when it gets public like that, and by the way, athletes are now empowered in a way they didn't used to be. You know, if you couldn't, how could an athlete, once upon a time, a boxer in particular, go at a powerful promoter? And Garcia is certainly a hot, as hot a prospect as they come, but he's not an established champion yet. He's not a pound for pound kind of guy, a superstar yet. And that guy didn't used to be in the position to go at a promoter like that and air his grievances in a way that would become as public as it can today. But for that to happen, I can only imagine how sour things are behind the scenes. And let me say this about Ryan Garcia, because you asked about Virgil Ortiz. He looks like the real deal. He when does. people talk about, there was talk about, well, maybe he and Devin Haney can fight. Yes, I, I, yeah, I'm here for that for sure. Max, here's how I'm going to wish you a happy Father's Day with your last Max Reacts this way, because boxing has a long history with fathers training their sons as pro fighters. If you, Max Kellerman, could be trained by any father who is a boxing trainer, past or present. I don't care if it's Papa Anatoly Lomachenko or Floyd Mayweather Sr. or Sr. Trinidad or uh, Yoel Jota, J Jack Mosley, anybody in the history of the game who was a dad who was a trainer, who you got? Ooh, a, who's a dad who's a trainer? Maybe well, in recent memory, it's Lomachenko's father because Lomachenko looks like he's on some next stuff. Um, <laughs> Floyd Sr., did he really train Floyd Jr. or Floyd? Or was that more Roger? So does he really get credit for well, Floyd, yeah, right? Yep, yeah, right. But he, what Loma, he had others. What Lomachenko's done as an amateur pro, Joe, in almost 400 fights, he had one loss as an amateur, and that was to one of those professional amateurs who he subsequently beat twice. He got two gold medals. And in his third pro fight, had a loss in a fight where he almost knocked his man out after he'd been hit low 100 times and, and has since gotten off the deck to beat larger men, completely dominated other fighters, made a string of top fighters in and around the weight class and a couple different weight classes, quit on their stools, and, and that's from, his, that's from the, the, the kind of work his father's put in. And you look at the other Ukrainians that his father has worked with, it's consistent, high-level success. And you know what I like about Papachenko? He's completely egoless, too. I mean, the guy barely even shows up to the weigh-in. He's just in the shadows, constantly thinking, how can I make my son better? How can we have the perfect fighter? Hey, happy Father's Day, my friend. You as well, Joe. All right, we'll talk soon. Max Kellerman. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.